talk about effects. I have always been a person who sort of resisted effects on analog synthesizers, but I've also kind of come around to it because they are so much fun. Uh, they, at th the fine people at IK Multimedia did not leave you with a simple effect or two. They gave you a billion, um, in the shape of four, but there's more here than meets the eye. You basically have four different types of effects and some of them have more types inside of them, which we'll explore right now. The first effect is drive. Now, one of the things that was one of the most characteristic elements of vintage synthesizers was that a lot of times there were perhaps accidents of uh, design that caused wave shapes uh, to overdrive and um, in doing so change, but also get a warm sort of character because overdriving a circuit causes it to saturate and it becomes fuzzy like... Uh, like a lot of sounds in nature. So a lot of the early synths, like the Mini Moog, have overdrive uh, built in accidentally. So, or by choice, simply because it was more appealing sounding. Anyway, there's drive on here. So uh, initially it just seems like it's getting louder. But if you listen really closely, you can hear the wave shape, the overdriven wave shape is different. So in addition to the other ways I've told you that you can really inspire an analog sounding, a vintage analog sounding synth with the, the Uno Synth Pro, this is another one. Adding drive to uh, situations where you have very subtle modulations in the wave shape and the tuning, you're just going to get like the richest, most obvious vintage analog sound out of this thing, which is awesome. I mean, it already has a decent analog sound. But uh, yeah, you can really nail some vintage synths with this. Now let's move on to mod, which uh, basically means modulation effects and not modulation as we <laughs> deal with it in general. And the modulation effect, I think the default is... A stereo chorus. So you could say, well, if you're if it's a chorus, why doesn't it say chorus? And that is because it's more <laughs> than a chorus. Again, we hit the data knob and we are offered type. And if you click on type, you can have chorus or you can have a phaser. And yes, these are stereo. Or you could have a flanger. But we're not th done there because if you choose one of them, like say chorus, we'll start with chorus. And then we go back, you can choose the mode. I don't know what the string is, but it sounds like a string. That's fantastic. Looks like we have synth one, synth two, and string. And then if you go back, you can also choose the intensity through percentage, the rate. You know, you could get a really crazy chorus going. It's not very crazy, but anyway. Uh, and then the amount, which you can also set, obviously, with the knob on the front. And it's the same if you go to like phaser. Now we're on phaser, and you can set the rate and each of these different effects has their own individual settings. Color. Uh, let's go back to rate. So yeah, each of these different types of modulation effects has their own functional settings. Uh, we did color and amount. Okay, so if we go back, and we go back up to uh, modulation. So, type rate color amount. 
All right, so those are the modulation effects. Of course, we also have delay. And it is a stereo delay, as you can probably tell. Delay is so fun, um, but you're not alone here with the delay either. There are several different types. There's a, a phaser, oh, whoops, <laughs> that's not what we're looking at. We're trying to look at delay. Okay, so there's ping pong. That's not the first one. First there's mono. Pretty straightforward. Um, stereo. And in stereo, you one of the options that will come up is you get to set the length of time that exists in the right and left side. So you get to decide, uh, design the stereo setup for the stereo delay. Doubler, which is interesting. If you couldn't hear, it has the initial sound in center panning, and then you hear it doubled, one in the left and one in the right. So that's an interesting effect. Ping pong, obviously named, LCR. Oh, it seems to go from left to right. Um, left, center, right is probably what that's for because you hear left and you hear one in the center and then you hear one on the right. If you don't believe me, I'll demonstrate it right now. So that's pretty cool. And those are your types and again, I don't know if I need to go through each of them, but for example, stereo, uh, we can go down to sync and you can of course sync the delay to the arpeggiator and the sequencer and the LFO. Um, you have time left, time right, feedback. Filter is an aspect that you have in all of the delays. Um, you get to filter the delay output. So like if we actually turn it down, you can hear it's filtered. And actually that's really cool sounding. Obviously, so you can emulate the sort of delays that, well, tape delays that had a degradation of sound as the delay progressed and amount. So each of them, let's see, like if we had doubler, what sort of extra situations do we get? Sync, time, feedback. I think it's the most filter again. They're mostly pretty straightforward in that way. So that is your delay. And then of course we have reverb. <laughs> As he plays the delay, we have reverb. <laughs> So let's see what we have in the way of delay. We have type. Oh, we're still not in reverb. Let's get to reverb. Okay. Type, hall, plate. Here's hall. Reverse. Pretty cool. Spring. And that's it. So, and individually, of course, if we go into these, uh, you have pre delay, size, time, time low, time high, filter, and amount. So, like, you get to uh, apparently divide the frequencies. Time low, one second. So you can have uh, the reverb be very short in 
higher notes and very long and lower notes. That's uh, that's a pretty cool effect. You know, these are not simple. <laughs> that's the thing that's uh, really interesting about them. You let's see what it has for reverse pre delay size. That is a lot of fun. And time and filter. I actually could use some filtering. So uh, those are the reverbs you have available to you. Let's see. Yeah, and spring, of course. Um, let's see, pre-delay, size. Clangy, just like a spring. Time, one second. Seems to be some distortion, that could be me. Yeah. yeah, that's uh that's long. <laughs> and you can do the filter too, which like if you were emulating certain electronic instruments as spring reverb, you'd want to definitely uh <laughs> filter out some of the high frequencies. I'm not gonna name any names. Anyway, as you can see, the FX section is a full-on effect processor built into this already feature-filled synth. So that is the effect section of the IK Multimedia Uno Synth. <laughs>